Hey everyone, it's Michelle. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my skincare favorites of 2019. Ever since starting 0.3% adapling last year, my skin has changed for the better, but also I have noticed that my skin has become a lot more sensitive. So much so that products I used to use and love in the past no longer work for me and actually caused more irritation. So the products I'm about to share with you now have worked for my skin when I was going through the retinization phase of different and obviously now with my still normal to dry acne prone skin. All right, let's get into the favorites. The first one is a makeup remover and I'm cheating a little bit by mentioning this because I only just started using it and I've used it a handful of times. But out of all the other makeup removers I've used this year, this one has definitely given me the biggest wow factor and that is the Curel Makeup Cleansing Gel. So the function of this is kind of similar to the Jordan Samuels Afterglow Treatment Cleanser, the one that's supposed to be like a gel to oil type of formula. However, this one is definitely lighter in oils. It feels way more gel-like in the weight of it and the consistency, aside from being the most recent one that I've been using. I do have cleansing oils in my collection right now, but again, the reason why this one stands out to me the most is because of how gentle it actually is and very effortless it is to use. It's not the type of gel that needs to really warm up in your hands to spread properly. It just spreads well. It removes makeup very easily. It was fairly gentle on my eyes, but like I said, I use the Marcel makeup remover for sensitive eyes because if something like this lingers on my eyes for too long, they become a little bit irritated. Either way, this was just really good at removing all my makeup. Spreads very easily, very easy to massage, easier to wash off no residue and on top of that this was fairly affordable on doco demo before shipping mind you the overall value of this product i definitely think is very worth it which is why i wanted to feature it in the skincare favorites video moving on to cleansers i have two of them to share with you the first one is dr sam's flawless cleanser and the second one is bioderma's cbm purifying cleansing foaming gel i reviewed all of dr sam's perfected basics i'll leave the blog post to that down below but to sum it up this is probably one of the most enjoyable cleansers i have ever used i really enjoyed the texture of this product. I personally found I didn't need to use a full pump, a little went a long way. It's pH balanced and even though it's a gel type texture, it's actually pretty thick. It doesn't foam up at all. It was really good as a morning or a second cleanse and it never did anything to compromise my skin's barrier. I would honestly love to repurchase this, but it is expensive because it is from London. So for those of you based in the UK, I think this would be a lot more affordable for you since you don't have to pay the international shipping fee. Also, you'll be supporting a local brand in your area of the world because Dr. Sam Bunting is based in London and I believe this product is also made in the UK. Since I didn't repurchase the Dr. Sam's Flawless Cleanser, I went in with something a bit more convenient for me here living in Canada and something that I could pick up at Chopper's Drug Mart or Rexall. It is definitely opposite in texture. It's a lot runnier, a lot thinner, and it foams up. But this is also pH balanced, and when I massaged this into my skin, I noticed a similar softening effect that I would get from the Dr. Sam's Flawless Cleanser. It also doesn't strip my skin barrier either. I actually find my skin very comfortable after using this, even if I were to dry it completely. This is a big bottle. This is 500 mils and I did get it for around $30. I not only use this on my face but my body as well and for one I need to shave. Both of these are awesome cleansers but obviously for me this one is definitely more accessible and comes in a way better size and value compared to the Dr. Sam's one. Either way I still highly recommend both of them. Next set of skincare items are hydrators and I have three of them here to show you. They all pretty much have the same common denominator in that they're pretty light in consistency and they are soothing and calming and don't irritate my skin. The first one I'm gonna mention is the Hotelabo Premium Lotion. I already purchased a refill of this product. This one is just an empty bottle. When I started using 0.3% Adapalene, I tried to cut back a lot on the amount of products I used. If you watch my morning and evening skincare routine, I would say it's pretty simplified. That's probably the most simple I've ever had my skincare routine in a while. And the one hydrator I used was this product. This one has 3% urea in it as well as five different molecules of hyaluronic acid. After cleansing, I would apply this on my face and I found it very soothing on my skin and it also softened my skin as well. I'm already normal to dry skin and adding a vitamin A product definitely made my skin drier at some point. So using a gentle hydrating product like this that had that softening benefits was really beneficial in my skincare routine. Second hydrator is Jordan Samuel Skin's Hydrate the Mist. This is a really nice product. If I ever found that my skin was a little bit irritated or sensitive, I would spray this on my face and I instantly noticed a calming, soothing effect. I would say the effect is pretty similar to the Aven Thermal Water Spray, but this one I find is a smidgen more moisturizing. What I also like this for as well is fixing my makeup. There was a point where I actually didn't have any fixing mists in my makeup collection. So if I needed my makeup to look a little bit more skin-like, I would use this mist. Actually, I'll use it right now. 
It's just a really nice fine mist. As you can see, it hasn't disrupted my makeup at all. It gave me maybe a bit more of a glow on my skin. For the last skincare product, it's Claire's Fundamental Watery Oil Drop. And like the name suggests, this definitely feels like a watery oil. Just like the other products, I appreciate the simplicity of it while still having some type of beneficial impact on my skin. I also find this so much better than their Rich Moist Soothing Serum. If you watched my Claire's brand review, I didn't mention that the Rich Moist Soothing Serum was probably my least favorite product out of the entire collection. Whereas this one, however, I found it way more enjoyable to use. I actually wanna purchase the mist version of this and then do a review of both products for you. But for the most part, really enjoyed this product. There's a reason it's in my skincare favorites this year. All right, and as for actives, I have these three to share with you. Let's get the first one out of the way, and that is my different prescription of 0.3% Adapalene. If you haven't watched my skin updates, I suggest you do so. I did do a before and after version of what this has done for my skin so far in terms of acne scars. And like I mentioned in my makeup favorites, I do plan on doing a skincare update after this video. What I will say for now is everything I'm mentioning in this video is to accommodate using this product. It is because of this prescription that I mostly attribute to my skin's health today and how much it's improved since I first started YouTube. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna say for different for now until you see the skin update video. Next active product is the Paula's Choice Acne Body Spray with 2% salicylic acid. This is my second bottle of this product and I definitely think it's made a difference in terms of the congestion I used to experience on my body. When I work out more consistently and it's summertime, I definitely notice a increase in congestion, not only in my chest, but on my back. Usually on my back is where I get cystic acne as well if I'm not careful. I find using any type of body wash, even if it's not this Bioderma one here, that as long as I follow up with this spray, my body maintains its clarity. The spray is really good on this too. I don't need anyone's help when I use it. I just reach for the back like this, spray, spray, spray and it is a really nice fine mist that disperses in a wide area. It's only when it reaches the near bottom that it becomes slightly annoying to use, but overall it's not a big deal and I would definitely repurchase this again and I still recommend it to you all. And for the last active, it is Benzogel 5 Acne Wash. This is a 5% benzoyl peroxide wash. So in my last skincare update, I did mention I was using azelaic acid as my main active to combat any active acne lesions. The thing though is that the Paula's Choice one comes in a small tube and it's also expensive to get, especially with the Canadian dollar conversion and you know, shipping it from the US as well. Whereas the Benzogel 5 Acne Wash is in Shoppers Drug Mart and it's also less than $10. I had a very long-term love-hate relationship with benzoyl peroxide. There was actually one point I was using an 8% gel prescription of it and I eventually developed an allergic reaction to it. So it's been a few years since then, but incorporating a wash into my routine, I found I don't get the same side effects that I would with a leave-on product. I plan on filming a tried and true benzoyl peroxide video, and I have a very good before and after to show you all. Basically, this entire area, my usual breakout area, was a bit more crazier than usual, and by using this in just a few days really helped clear up the area and lower the inflammation. So stay tuned for that video. In the meantime, if you're looking for a fairly affordable product that's gonna help clear up any inflamed active acne lesions, definitely check this wash out. For moisturizers and occlusives, I have these two products right here. So the first one you all have seen before in my nighttime and morning skincare routine, and that is the Bioderma Atoderm Intensive Balm. I finished the tube version of this product and I actually purchased the large pump bottle. It came in a value pack of two for less than $40 for sure. It was like $30 to $40 max. I still use this as my morning and nighttime moisturizer. The same goes with my boyfriend. And sometimes I use it on my body as well. I just really like the fact that this is a nourishing moisturizer for my normal to dry skin but it doesn't congest my skin either, so it's friendly towards my acne prone skin. When I first started using this, I actually felt a tingly type of sensation on my skin. I thought I was having a reaction to it, but when I looked at my skin later in the mirror, it actually looked a lot smoother. I also really enjoy the texture of this product. It doesn't leave a greasy finish. My face feels really nice and smooth. Because I'm a skincare junkie, however, I can't help but wonder what the Atoderm Creme feels like. That one is suited for dry skin as well, and it's supposed to keep your skin moisturized for 24 hours. So I can't help but wonder what the difference is between the two, but in the meantime, I'm gonna kill my curiosity and just stick to this moisturizer for now. For my favorite occlusive type of product, hands down, it goes to the CeraVe Baby Healing Ointment. I checked the ingredients compared to the regular healing ointment. They're pretty much the same. If anything, the order of ingredients is slightly different. Basically, this is described as a jacked up version of Vaseline. It does have 46.5% 
petrolatum as the active ingredient as a skin protectant. But with typical CeraVe, it does have the hyaluronic acid, it has the ceramides, it has the cholesterol, it has the phytosphingosine, and it also has panthenol. Like I mentioned in my tried and true dehydrated tips, if you do have super dry skin, definitely get yourself a good occlusive and this is definitely one to look out for. All right, and last category of skincare favorites is sunscreen. Of course, I'm mentioning the Can Make Mermaid Skin UV Gel SPF 50 plus PA4 plus. And the second sunscreen here is one I just reviewed for you all in a sunscreen Sunday post. That is the Bioderma Photoderm SPF 50 plus Milk High Protection Sunscreen. Let's get this one out of the way very quickly. I think you all know how much I love this product. Favorite sunscreen of all time. It is, I believe, in holy grail status. It's very comfortable to apply the two milligram per centimeter square amount on my face. It still feels very light. I notice that my skin looks very calm and even when I use this product. There is definitely a mermaid-like skin finish when you use it, so as a result, your face might look a little bit shinier than normal, but it's definitely something that you can counteract with a powder. And it's also been my go-to daily sunscreen for going to work because it acts as a really good primer as well. This is currently my fourth bottle of this product. I have one more backup and then I have to do another repurchase. As for the Bioderma Photoderm 50 Plus, this is my favorite sunscreen to use when I need that high UVA protection. This was my go-to sunscreen, particularly in the summer. I would apply it all over my face and any area on my body that would be exposed. I most definitely never received a sunburn at all while using this product. I also found that freckles that I usually get around my nose and on the high points of my cheeks have actually never came to the surface while using this. Even then, I don't exclusively use this in the summertime. I actually use this if I want a little bit more moisture than what the Can Make one gives me. All right, and that is it for my skincare favorites of 2019. I'm currently filming this on New Year's Eve, so I'm hoping to get it up today as well. If I do post this in 2020, however, I do hope you all have had an amazing new year. Thank you once again for sticking around and watching my videos. I hope 2020 brings us all amazing things. We accomplished our new year's resolutions. If we have them, let's make the most of this new decade. Let's make it count. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all soon. Ciao.